Stasis Titan has always been interesting to say the least in regards to the Destiny 2 sandbox. And with Episode 2 Revenant, not only did Titan get some buffs, especially on the Prismatic subclass, but the Icefall Mantle exotic gauntlets got a complete rework that makes them probably one of the best survivability exotics in the game. So let's not waste any time and dive right into it. If you recall, what Icefall Mantle used to do was is that it would take up your class ability, you'd pop it, you'd get a Stasis Overshield. This was before Frost Armor with the final shape. But essentially, the main issue with the exotic was that you had no movement ability at all. You couldn't sprint. All you could do is walk. And it did allow for some interesting interactions in PvP, but it didn't really have a place in PvE. And the changes to it just make it really, really good. So now, as long as you have a stasis super equipped, which means it'll work with prismatic, rapid stasis final blows grant frost armor, you heal a small amount whenever you gain frost armor, and replaces your class ability with a burst of stasis energy that freezes nearby combatants, slows nearby opponents, and grants you increased frost armor. Not only do you get max stacks of frost armor when using the class ability, but it'll freeze everything around you, which makes it very easy for ad clear, and every time you gain frost armor, you also heal, which is freaking awesome now going over the subclass i'm actually going to give you a prismatic and a stasis setup because both have their benefits going over prismatic obviously we need to use the glacial quake stasis super to take advantage of the gauntlets and it's honestly a decent super especially in the new dungeon there's some funny clips out there but for our other abilities here for your class ability you can use what you like because the exotic actually takes up that slot so you don't really need to worry about it, it has its own cooldown so do not worry there. For movement, I like strafe lift, but you can use what you like. For the melee, you do have some options, but pairing up the frenzy blade so you have three melees with the consecration slam is pretty good. Again, it does a lot of damage to targets. You can wipe out a lot of enemies, so it is pretty good. But if you wanted to switch it out for, you know, thunderclap or shield throw, I would recommend one of those two. And then switching out consecration for diamond land so you can freeze and shatter targets, which does lead into some of the artifact perks, which is really nice. And then for the grenade, I'd recommend the glacial grenade. The other aspect you want to keep on is knockout. Again, whenever you get a melee kill, it'll make you amplified. It gives you health back and infuses your unpowered melee with arc energy. It'll increase your range and damage with that as well. The main thing is getting health back and also becoming amplified. For your fragments, first up, Facet of Hope. This is probably the most important one. So while you have any elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Again, since the exotic is tied to your class ability, you want the cooldown as fast as possible and you want those max frost armor stacks as much as possible as well. So Facet of Hope is easily one of the most important fragments here. Next, with Facet of Balance, rapidly defeating targets with light damage gives melee energy and with darkness damage you get grenade energy essentially we can have our abilities back faster next facet of dawn so powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant power melee final blows makes you and nearby allies radiant. it's a minus 10 of strength this is pretty much free bonus damage here but since we don't have a way to get radiant from the artifact like we do last season having facet of dawn on is going to be pretty clutch here and then facet of protection while surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage while transcendent the effect is increased that's a plus 10 to strength again if you're going to be surrounded and you freeze them with you know the exotic ability anyway you might as well have increased damage resistance and lastly facet of purpose so when you pick up orb of power it's going to give you a buff dependent upon what super you're using and in this case we have the stasis super which means when we pick up orbs of power we're going to have frost armor with how we have the setup it's pretty much going to allow us to have max frost armor up all the time and you know, even if we don't have max, if we have, you know, one, two, three, or four stacks and we have the class ability, we can automatically get five stacks with that. With how this is set up, we want that increased damage resistance from Frost Armor as much as possible. For the stasis setup, for your abilities, again, it doesn't really matter what class ability you use because the exotic takes over, so it doesn't really matter whether you use Rally or Towering Barricade. For movement, again, I still like Strafe Lift. You can use what you like. The melee, we have Shivering Strike, and then for the grenade, I'm using the Glacial Grenade again. For our aspects, Tectonic Harvest is the big one here, so shattering a Stasis Crystal or a Frozen Target grants a Stasis Shard. This Shard grants melee energy when picked up by you or your allies. While Tectonic Harvest is equipped, picking up Stasis Shards grants stacks of Frost Armor. The main thing here is creating those Stasis Shards with this aspect. For your other aspect, I personally like using Howl of the Storm. So while siding, activate your charge melee ability to launch a wave of stasis energy forward that freezes targets and creates stasis crystals. Again, having more stasis crystals on the field means more stasis shards. And since we're going to be getting the melee back pretty quickly with all the stasis shards we're going to be <laughs> grabbing, this is going to work out perfectly. For your fragments, I personally like Whisper of Chain. So defeating targets while you have Frost Armor has a chance to create a stasis shard. It's a plus 10 to recovery. Next, Whisper of Shards. Shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate. Shattering additional stasis crystals increase the duration of this benefit, which means we can have our glacial grenade more often. 
Next, Whisper of Conduction. Nearby Stasia Shards track to your position. It's a plus 10 to resilience and intellect, which means we don't have to go running around for other Stasia Shards. They'll automatically track to us once we're close enough. And then lastly, Whisper of Rhyme. This one's pretty important. Your Frost Armor has increased duration and maximum stack count, which means instead of having Frost Armor times five, like on Prismatic, we can have Frost Armor times eight and take advantage of more damage resistance. And what's pretty cool is that when you use the exotic class ability to give yourself the Frost Armor, it actually gives you max stacks of times eight, which is kind of sick. For your artifact perks in the first column for your weapon champion mods, you can use what you like. For the stasis stuff though, I would recommend one with frost, so while you have frost armor, your stasis weapon gain increased reload speed, stability, and stasis swords gain increased guard resistance. I also recommend armor of Aramis, so while frost armor is active, taking critical damage from combatants causes you to emit a freezing burst, which is similar to the actual exotic, which is pretty nice. Next, with hail of the storm, shattering stasis crystals releases shards of ice that damage and slow targets, pretty much allowing for more, you know, stasis debuffs on the field. And then Brain Freeze, Frozen Combatants become surrounded by a Chilling Fog, which slows combatants that aren't already. Weapons with the Dark Aether Origin trait deal more damage to Frozen targets. The main thing here is that when a target is frozen, it pretty much makes a mini Dust Field grenade when they're frozen, which is freaking sick. Now, I would recommend Crystalline Converter if you're on the Stasis subclass in particular, because when you gather Stasis Shards, you gain stacks of the Crystalline Converter. Your next powered Stasis Melee hit creates Stasis Crystals equal to the number of stacks that you have. So, with the Stasis subclass in particular that you, you know can see from the footage here, essentially, I'm collecting all those Stasis Shards, and when I use my Slide Melee to create, you know, the wave of, you know, Stasis Crystals, the other crystals will pop up around it, which is just absolutely insane. So I would recommend it for the Stasis subclass, not Prismatic though. I am going to be using some grenade launchers here, so I would recommend Rapid Impact. So dealing damage with a grenade launcher temporarily increases the reload speed of grenade launchers, and then pairing that with Concussive Reload. So your grenade launcher, when you damage a boss, a champ, or break a combatant shield, it will weaken them. You know, pairing that with something like Power from Pain is decent as well. So those rapid final blows against weakened combatants grants you Devour. It is a chance to get it, and I have had it pop up a couple of times, but again, it's not absolutely necessary. Even with Tonal Carnage, you know, the finishing mod that gives you damage resistance, it's pretty good, but it's not absolutely necessary. So if you switch it out for something else, that's totally fine. Now, for your other one in the last column, I do like Conductive Cosmic Crystal for Prismatic in particular. So your Arc Abilities, Void Abilities, and Weapons with the Dark Aether reaper origin trait do bonus damage to targets that are affected by a stasis debuff so as long as they're frozen or slowed all those things can do more damage to those targets which is nice but if you're on the stasis subclass i would look into served cold so when you pick up a stasis shard it grants you class ability energy which means you can have your exotic perk for frost armor times eight even faster now let's go over some weapon options and Boy, do we have a lot. So in the kinetic slot, probably one of the best options is Verglas Curve. So Hail Barrage, final blows with the weapon, Grant Stasis Arrows. Your next hit fire shot will fire all of them in a single volley. Essentially, this bow can create free Stasis Crystals. If you direct impact a combatant or guardian, it'll slow and freeze them. And then with the catalyst, for example, freezing or slowing a target, grants this weapon faster draw speed for a short period of time. Essentially, it's more stasis crystals. It definitely benefits the stasis subclass versus the prismatic subclass a little bit more, but still, it is very good for crowd control overall. Some other primary weapons, anything that can come with something like headstone is gonna be really good. I have this bold endings with enhanced headstone and dragonfly. I still really like this hand cannon. You can get it from the pale heart. I do have it crafted. If you have something like the wicked implement that'll create those stasis shards, slow freeze targets, and also with the catalyst have headstone on it, this thing is an absolute beast as well. Even the new primary grenade launcher that's pretty much the free version of Mountaintop this season, it's absolutely disgusting as well. You know, being able to create, you know, free special and heavy ammo just off of hits is kind of insane. For special weapons, honestly, any stasis special will work. You know, the lost signal from last season, the stasis area denial is absolutely nuts. I have enhanced auto loading and reverberation. I enjoy using this thing a lot. If you have the grenade launcher from this season, the liturgy, this is the curator role, by the way, rhyme stealer with chill clip with rhyme stealer as long as you you know destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target you get frost armor so this thing is just <laughs> absolutely nuts but exotic wise you could go age scepter again you'll defeat targets it'll slow them and freeze them and if you want to drain your super energy for 
basically better results, you could totally do that as well. For energy weapons, if I'm gonna be using a primary in my kinetic slot, I personally like using the forbearance. You know, it's a grenade launcher. I could take advantage of the artifact. Plus with ambitious assassin chain reaction on the one from Battle Disciple, it is great for crowd control. If you have the one from Into the Light and you have a good roll on it, I would highly recommend using it. Or if you can get your hands on the new area denial void grenade launcher from the dungeon, I'd recommend that one as well. The only reason I'm using arc is to take advantage of some mods, which I'll show off later. And if you don't have that, you know, Indebted of Kindness is always a good special weapon option as well. I have Beacon Rounds and Volt Shot on this one. And for primary weapons though, you can honestly use what you like. Since I am focusing on arc weapons, I would recommend the new Vantage Point Pulse Rifle. This thing is disgusting. I have stats for all and jolting feedback. And with the Order Trait perk, you can like double the magazine size so you never have to reload, which means jolting feedback is better than Volt Shot with this Pulse Rifle. So it's absolutely nuts. Again, I do use the Ikelos SMG on occasion as well. And then your heavy slot, you can honestly use what you like here. Again, I have the Bittersweet Grenade Launcher MVS Arsenal Bait and Switch enhanced with the Dark Ether Origin Trait perk to take advantage of some of the artifact perks and also some of my mods on my armor, which again, I'll talk about later. As long as you have these weapons that will match some of your armor mods, you're totally good. The main thing is choosing a decent stasis weapon in the kinetic slot. And before diving into armor mods, let's talk about what stats you want to look for. Number one, we talk about every video, try to have tier 10, 100 resilience. It's gonna give you a 30% damage reduction. And with Titan specifically, that is tied to the class ability cooldown. So as long as you have tier 10, you can have the fastest cooldown, which means we can have the Icefall Mantle perk as much as possible. After that, I would focus on discipline and also strength. Discipline is tied to grenade, you know, ability regen and strength is tied to your melee ability regen. And those two are going to be pretty important. But again, the main one is going to be resilience. On the helmet, I'm going with harmonic siphon. So if I get those rapid stasis weapon final blows, it'll create an orb of power. And then I have special ammo finder with special ammo scout, but you can't switch this out for heavy ammo finder with heavy ammo scout. For your gauntlets, I would recommend impact induction and momentum transfer. So when you cause damage with your melee and grenade, it actually gives a cooldown for both of those abilities respectively. For the Prismatic subclass, I do like heavy handed. So my power melee final blows will create orbs of power but if you're not on that i would recommend switching it out for something like another impact induction a momentum transfer or you could look to focusing strike or bolstering detonation as well on the chest piece i'm rocking arc reserve so i can have more ammo for my special and heavy arc weapons again make sure your reserve mod matches up with whatever weapons you're using and then resistance mod wise you can use what you like depending on the encounter you're doing on my boots i'm using recuperation so when i pick up an orb of power it gives me health back and then i'm rocking double arc weapon surge again for my arc weapons make sure these match whatever weapons you're using so i will gain a small bonus to damage while i have any armor charge your armor charge now decays over time essentially when you collect orbs of power you'll gain an armor charge with this bow in particular you can have up to three armor charges and with any of these blue mods it actually puts a 10 second timer on each armor charge so at max stacks we can have 30 seconds of this bonus weapon damage and lastly on the class item i like using reaper so shortly after using my class ability your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power then with powerful attraction, automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability. So not only will we activate our class ability, freeze everything around us, we'll also collect orbs of power for, you know, keeping frost armor up and proccing recuperation. And then lastly, I personally like using outreach, so it reduces my melee cooldown when I use my class ability, but you can switch this out for something like bomber. Even with the changes, I didn't know how good this exotic was going to be on prismatic and even the stasis subclass in general, but the ability spam that you can use with this is absolutely insane and being able to keep up frost armor pretty much constantly is absolutely nuts especially on the stasis subclass having frost armor times eight from just using your class ability is disgusting i like synthesaps and you know the triple consecration slam as much as everybody else but if you're someone who kind of wants to step away from that this build is easily probably one of the top tier builds for the season but that ladies and gentlemen is my revenant icefall mantle build for both the prismatic and stasis subclasses let me know what you guys think in the comments i'm actually going to put the dim links for both of these builds in the description so if you want to copy everything that i'm using down to the subclass the armor mods the weapons even the drip if you'd like all of that will be included you know ornaments and shaders and all that great jazz copy the builds and go test out for yourself if there's something that you like using with this build in particular when it comes to something on the subclass a weapon and armor mod definitely let me know in the comments i'm testing stuff out in this game all the time in any event if you enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like on it subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell next to notification so you don't miss out on any other destiny builds here on the channel if you didn't know we live stream here on youtube and also over on twitch that link will be in the description we will be doing vespers post dungeon help so if you want help with the dungeon you know come by stream hop in the chat say something if we're running it we can definitely help you out and if you want to be proactive join my discord we're gonna have plenty of people looking to run the dungeon so if you would like help whether it's from me or some in my community 
definitely hop in. And lastly, if you want to help support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription, but it is technically cheaper. In any event, you do get access to the exclusive emotes, the monthly badges, and other cool stuff here on the channel. Mainly being, you can get access to all of my long form videos early. So if you want to see a new Destiny build early, you can get access to it right away when I post it. So if you want more information, all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe, and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.